The narrative is shifting, but the authorities keep on fighting. New York City are insisting that unvaccinated workers shouldn't get their jobs back. Meanwhile, we learn that Canadian truckers weren't so Nazi after all when they protested against mandates. The good news is, though, Joe Biden says you can have $5 off your grocery bill if you continue to tow the state line. Yippee! <laughs> Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining us on this voyage to truth, light and freedom together. Come on in. You are all welcome. There's nothing you've done or said that prevents you being part of this community. We have to change the world. The only way we're going to do it is by loving one another. Join us every day on Rumble at these times where we broadcast live. We have fantastic guests. We're completely uncensored. But that lack of censorship doesn't facilitate meanness and cruelty. It facilitates openness and love and coming together and bringing together diverse, open minds from all over the political, cultural and religious spectrum to come up with new truths and new ways of organising the world together. Every single, we sh every single show we've made so far is up there right now. Click over. They're on there for free. They're fantastic shows. And we need them at a time like this. Let's look at today's story. New York City are appealing against the judge's verdict that unvaccinated people should get their jobs back. While we await the verdict, those people can't go back to work, by the way. Also, a new report has revealed that those Canadian truckers that we were told were Nazis and hairy and smelly were, wait for it, peaceful. Unfortunately, while they were doing that, they were simultaneously working class. So we should assume that they were Nazi just in case. I mean, they had a job, so that's working class, right? So that's Nazi. <laughs> that's, a, that's the way it works these days. And of course, the reason we're talking about this at all is because in spite of everything that's becoming apparent now, at least appears to be becoming apparent, Joe Biden, having created a cost of living crisis, along with Putin, no one's saying Putin doesn't cause cost of living crises, is offering a miserable me easily $5 off your groceries as long as you cooperate with the system and get yourself vaccinated, particularly now it's not paid for by taxpayers. Get the shot. Get the shot. Get it. Why are you arguing about the shot? Why do you want more information? Why are you looking at black tail pages? Why are you looking at the data on natural immunity? Get the shot. Five, ten, twenty dollars off the, your drugstore grocery purchase. Five, ten, twenty. Now he's negotiating with us. Why are we still doing stuff to advance the interests of the pharmaceutical industry? Oh, sorry. Well, no, it's for people, isn't it? It's for people everywhere. OK, so what's happening with New York City and those people not getting their jobs back? How are we supposed to tie all together these narrative threads except by using the this model. If you look at this from the perspective of what most benefits the most powerful elite interests in the world, if you look at it from that perspective, suddenly a lot of stuff starts making sense. Oh, wow. The ability to capture and gather data. Oh, wow. The ability to move taxpayer money over to private interests like big pharma, big food, big tech, finding new and ingenious ways of funding the endeavours of private companies, then excluding you when it comes to profit time. But we don't look at things from that perspective. That's why things are so confusing. If indeed the reason to get this shot is to protect you from potential health matters and I don't know what your family situation is and I don't know what's best for you and I just want what's best for you. Look into my eyes. I want what's best for you. I want what is best for all of us. Then if it is what's best for all of us, then why simultaneously are unvaccinated workers being prevented from going back to work even though a judge has decreed they should get their jobs back? Why? Or grocery purchase next time at the same time you get the shot. Go down the shop, get the shot. Get your groceries, they cost a lot, but at least you can get the shot down the shop. So here we go. New York City is appealing a judge's ruling to reinstate municipal employees fired for not getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, I believe these are people that work in sanitation, people that collect garbage, people that during the pandemic were hailed as heroes. These brave heroes carrying on doing their job. So they were heroes then, but now the state is going up against them, stopping them getting their jobs back after they've been through a judicial process in order to get their jobs back, which is pretty clear at this point. Let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat. They should have lost in the first place. The city is appealing the latest ruling by a Staten Island judge finding a segment of the municipal workforce should not require vaccination. 
Staten Island Supreme Court Justice Ralph Porzio ruled that the vaccination requirement for a group of 16 sanitation workers suing the city is arbitrary and capricious. <laughs> well, that's not how you want a state run. Well, firstly, we do things arbitrarily. Wee, wee. Why did you do that? I don't know. Just for no reason. Oh, OK. Is there any motivation? Oh, yeah. Caprice. Like I do things sort of with a little bit of malice and on whims. Mild, vague cruelty and very whimsically. Oh, well, as you were, keep going. Seems like a lovely way to run the old big friendly apple, the great beautiful melting pot that is New York. I mean, isn't this a story where you have the opportunity to support ordinary working people? You have the opportunity to show that we're all on the same side. People that collect our garbage, the hidden people, the people you don't want to acknowledge are there, the people that are necessary for literally the stuff you don't want no more, the stuff that you're throwing out. Instead of saying, why don't we make those jobs as amenable and as pleasant and as fair and as well paid and as well rewarded because they're necessary for society, that so it's dignified work for dignified working people. No, why don't we use the state to crush them, to crush them into total compliance? One theory is that the pandemic was an opportune moment to reduce workforces and reduce payrolls. And if these people are successful in winning their case, not only will you have to have all those back payments, but you also challenge the efficacy of the model. I don't know if New York's garbage collection is privatised yet, but I bet it will get privatised at some point. And having a lower payroll bill when that comes will be advantageous. And any of you that are following this sort of AI revolution will know that those are the kind of jobs that will go next. We'll have robot slaves instead of near human slaves. And these kind of people are not considered worthy of protection of the state. Now, although a lot of you have questions around socialism, understandably born of your suspicions of Maoism and Stalinism and centralised state systems that I would oppose alongside you. But when it comes to compassion and dignity of ordinary working people, who's going to look after them, if not everyone? Who's going to stand up for them against the state or against corporate power? Answers in the chat, please. Being vaccinated does not prevent an individual from contracting or transmitting COVID-19, the ruling notes. Although I would never say that because I'm not a judge. I'm just a guy in a hat. Judge, uh, don't start a YouTube channel, baby. But if you go on Rumble, you might do quite well. The ruling would reinstate fired unvaccinated employees and order back pay. And as it has in the past, the city is appealing. Until that court rules, the vaccine mandate remains in effect. New York State's COVID-19 vaccine mandate alone led to about 34,000 health workers losing jobs or being placed on leave. That is not an insignificant number of human beings. 34,000 people. That's a... Billy Joel concert, a Bruce Springsteen concert of unemployed people from valuable sectors, people that are doing necessary work to hold together a nation, a state, a city. What is it then when you're, I'm proud of my city, I love my country, what is it? Just the flag. Does the flag mean anything? No. It means nothing. If it means something, it's this. We have a structure. We look after each other. We have connections to one another. We have a set of principles and values that we stick to. And part of that has got to come, hasn't it? You tell me. Do you believe in God? I believe in God. As you know, if you saw my Tulsi Gabbard interview, it means that we have love. We have compassion. We hold ourselves and one another to account. We make mistakes. We're flawed. We're fallible. But we try to improve ourselves based on a set of values and principles, not just, oh, yeah, Pete, we're sacking these 34,000 people now. On the other hand, aside from that sort of religious passion compassionate crap that I just spouted. If you do have a for-profit healthcare system, getting rid of 34,000 workers, replacing them with people, possibly people that have come from other countries at a much lower rate, that would be good for profit, business and for shareholders. But I don't know. I don't know if that's a factor. Let me know in the chat. Meanwhile, up a bit in a country that I as an Englishman consider to be basically the same, let me know in the chat, in Canada, the truckers have been proven not to have been Nazis. I feel like I saw Justin Trudeau coming on my TV set saying, and they're Nazis, they're awful, they're this, they're that. Don't you remember that? I feel like people had their bank accounts frozen. Oh, these truckers. Let's have a look at what's going on. Public Safety Canada officials admitted in internal updates that the Freedom Convoy protests were peaceful and that no violence was taking place, despite claims by the minister, Marco Mendicino. These are internal documents. These are not things that should be shared with the public, because otherwise the public would go, hold on, you told us they were violent Nazis. Yeah, we had to tell you that at the time because it was irritating that they were doing that protest. We thought, what could we say that people don't like? Well, no one likes violent Nazis. Oh, no, they were horrible, weren't they, the Nazis? Well, should we just say these are a lot of Nazis then? Well, are they Nazis? No, you're missing the point. 
Just say they're Nazis, but they're not Nazis. Listen, you can just say stuff and no one will ever check. They'll forget down the line. They'll forget that down the line, loads of unvaccinated people lost their job. They'll forget down the line that a load of Canadian truckers were called Nazis because they'll have moved on to something else. Then, like, I don't know, it'll be a war or something. So can we just say they're Nazis? Do you mean like those Nazis in Ukraine that we're funding in a war against Russia? Oh, uh, no, those, those Nazis are the not Nazis. Those are good Nazis. Wait, is it like we've got to like break Nazis down now into good Nazis and bad Nazis? Because I thought Nazi meant bad. Yeah, but the truckers are bad Nazis. Truckers, bad Nazis. Ukrainian Nazis that are part of the fighting forces that are opposing Russia, Russian tyranny. Good Nazis. Whew, this is confusing. Yeah, just, just keep concentrating on consolidating centralized global power and you won't go far wrong. Thank you. According to Black Lock's reporter, Daily Reports described the demonstrations as peaceful, undisruptive, and stable. <laughs> Almost no point having them. Mm. Oh, come on through, come on through. This is a quote. The Freedom Convoy so far has been peaceful and cooperative with police, an internal memo stated on January 27th. What more can you ask for the protest that is stable, peaceful, and disruptive? Should these people be vilified? Should their bank accounts be frozen? Should they be maligned, maltreated? Up until February the 11th, officials monitoring the situation stated that there were no major incidents, that no violence took place, that disruption to government activities was minor, that there were minimal people on Parliament Hill, and that the situation remained stable, and that planning was ongoing. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya, kumbaya, my lord. Nazis! How am I the Nazi? Am I a member of a Ukrainian fighting force? Could I get like some maybe some missiles from Raytheon or Lucky? Not that kind of Nazi, bad Nazi. Shut up, it's too confusing. Since most government employees are working remotely, the disruption to government activities is so far minor. In contrast, key liberal cabinet members, including Mendicino and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, sought to paint the protesters as violent. Justin Trudeau, you know he likes painting things. This is true, though. We cannot allow illegal and dangerous activities to continue. Kumbaya, my lord, kumbaya. <laughs> dangerous, illegal. Oh, where? Well, can we help? Oh, it's us again, isn't it? Occupying streets, harassing people, breaking the law. This is not a peaceful protest. Well, according to internal memos, it literally was a peaceful protest. There were other protests at that time, which actually, by the way, I would be largely supportive of also, but were not subject to this level of scrutiny and analysis. We have to find a way of supporting one another across a range of cultural issues, regardless of the demographic and cultural data. Otherwise, these centralized and centralizing forces are going to destroy all of us. Even if you find yourself broadly agreeing with them at the moment, the day will come. Mark these words of mine where you are the person at the end of the barrel. You are the person in the crosshairs. You suddenly find yourselves tagged with a Nazi label. Let me know in the chat if you agree. In a tweet, Trudeau condemned the anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-black racism, homophobia and transphobia that we've seen on display in Ottawa. I mean, also, like, why would they be doing that? Why would you, if your point of your protest is, listen, our ability to do the trucking and that is being badly impugned by these new laws around uh, certain medications. Also, I've got some terrible views on the Jewish community, Muslims, uh, people of colour in general. I also don't like gay people or trans people. Like, that doesn't even make sense as a protest anymore. <laughs> How would you have time to focus on the key issue? You know, all those things. Anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-black racism, homophobia, transphobia. I'm on your side in that fight. I'm on your side. I'm against all of those things. We've got no time for that stupidity in 2022. This is a time of awakening. We can't be thinking about that bullshit. You be who you are. You be who you are. We've got to find a culture, a community, a global and independent communities where everyone is, if not celebrated, then is able to be who they are certainly within their own community. But you can't start using this language to prevent ordinary working people standing up for their rights. And if that language is used to condemn ordinary people, we have to be real diligent about ensuring that it's true and not just a way of nullifying legitimate protest. Trudeau previously denounced anti-vaxxers as misogynists and racists. That's not, that doesn't make sense. Qui croient pas dans la science, qui sont souvent misogynes, qui souvent racistes. Why are you not getting that vaccine? You know women, yeah, like my mum, my sisters, all of the women in my life, even the concept of femininity, which is within all of us and nature herself. Yeah, I don't like them. And that's why I'm not getting a vaccine. 
That doesn't make sense. It's not a real argument. It's not real. It's not real. No one's not getting a vaccine because they don't like women or they don't like people that are a different colour from the colour that they are. Of course, you can't guarantee that all unvaccinated people are 100% not racist or misogynist. Those categories appear to exist throughout time, throughout society. They seem to be everywhere. But it's not the role of government to use reductive language to turn people against the... Oh no, actually that is the role of government. Sorry, the role of government is to use reductive language to turn people against one another so ordinary people can't unite because they're too busy thinking, well, you might be homophobic, we are probably racist. Oh, well, you might be super, super social justice warrior. So let's forget any alliance that we could achieve together and meet all of our goals if we're living in separate communities. It doesn't really matter what we're doing culturally, religiously and sexually because that's our own private business. There's a thing called private. So uh, let's all just unite. But no, if they continue to stoke through hate speech, they're the ones, ironically, using the hate speech to call someone a misogynist and a racist and then condemn a whole raft of people. That is hate speech, not just because it's hateful to those people, because it prevents love between us. In response to the protests, Mr. Trudeau invoked the Emergencies Act for the first time in Canadian history. Uh-oh, this is an emergency, what? Some people are thinking for themselves. Stop that shit! But the Canadian Civil Liberties Association stated, the federal government has not met the threshold necessary to invoke the Emergencies Act. This law creates a high and clear standard for good reason. The act allows government to bypass ordinary democratic processes. Oh, what a coincidence. The standard has not been met. The Emergencies Act can only be invoked when a situation seriously threatens the ability of the government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security and territorial integrity of Canada and when the situation cannot be effectively dealt with under any other law of Canada. You can see that beneath the hair, beneath the rhetoric of love and inclusion, there is a desire to instate the kind of powers that bypass democracy. If for all of that inclusivity, conversation, democracy, conviviality, community, really what they want is, this is what we're doing and we're doing it because we want to. In December 2020, Mr Trudeau chided India for its police response to farmers' blockades of Delhi. Let me remind you, he said, Canada will always be there to defend the right of peaceful protest. Let me remind me that Canada will always be there. He needs to remind himself. Put down the face paint, pick up the pen, write that on your own hand. Protect democracy, protect the right, defend the people. Write that down. Good use of the face paint there. So, what are we being invited to do? Forget events of just a couple of years ago that appear to be creaking under the weight of their own duplicity and move forward with Biden's offer of $5 off your grocery bills that have been inflated for a number of reasons for that it could be effectively handled in so many other ways. I don't even want to get into the ways you could make the lives of ordinary people so much easier because I'll blow my mind and for that you're going to have to join me on Rumble where I can speak freely outside of the guidelines. Remember again, on Rumble, our free speech is about the freedom to express love, the freedom to bring together community, not the freedom to criticise and condemn people on the basis of individual identity, because this is a time where inclusivity and collaboration are more required than ever before. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what you think in the chat. If you enjoyed this video, watch either of these. Sign up to my mailing list. But most importantly, join us over there. Every show we've made on Rumble now, freely available to you immediately. Stay free.